What's up everybody, my name is Chris and today in this video I want to talk about whether or not it is actually possible to vlog on the Canon EOS R in 4K. Right now what you're seeing is the Canon EOS R and there are two different shots. One is set up with the 15 to 35 at 35 and the other one is shot at 35 millimeters and both of them are basically having the same field of view. Of course they are put next to each other which means that they are going to be slightly different from another. However, what I want to basically show here is the different field of view that you get when you shoot in 4K on the Canon EOS R. When I am looking straight into the camera that is to the left from where I stand, then it is the 1080p version of that picture that you get with a 35 millimeter frame. Then on the right hand side, I have my other Canon EOS R, which is currently set up with the 35 millimeter f1.8 macro STM whatever lens, and that is currently shooting in 4K. Of course, there are tons of benefits of a wider field of view, but there are also tons of benefits to shooting in 4K. Nonetheless, it is four times the resolution, which also gives you more flexibility in post. However, you will have to step back if you have a camera like the Canon EOS R, which has a crop factor of about 1.8. Now, of course, there are now also cameras which don't even have that crop factor. However, upgrading to the R6, R5, EOS R3, I think is also full frame in 4K. That is a hefty price tag. And for me, I'm trying to maybe creep back into the area of shooting 4K. And right now here in Marbella, Spain, we actually have been doing a lot of 4K productions for the yoga course I've been doing with Nicole. Now I'm also holding two other lenses. However, just one of the two actually is a contender in this test that I'm going to do here today to basically show you whether or not this is a viable option. The 7200 is crazy, crazy far if you are shooting in 4K and this can actually, spider webs going around here, <laughs> but this can actually be a benefit if you are, for example, wanting that further reach. 200 millimeters times 1.8 is of course significantly more. Now the other one that I have in my hand is the 24 to 105 and I'm going to show this in this comparison as well because it is one of the main camera lenses for the Canon EOS R especially when it first came out and was introduced with this as a kit lens. This is also the set that I purchased when I started and now I have these other lenses available to me. However I want to show you what the difference can be with shooting in 4K in shooting in 1080p and of course also with these different lenses going from 15 millimeters on the far end which of course turns into something like 26 millimeters when you are on 4k then going also all the way up to 35 millimeters showing in between the 24 to 105 of course 35 millimeters when you go up to a 4k shot like you are seeing right now that of course then turns into a 61 millimeter shot and that is something that I would say just basically going here I am now touching the lens is barely doable as a vlogging shot. On the other hand of course 35 millimeters on this other camera would be something that is somewhat possible but of course going all the way out now we are at 15 millimeters that is vastly different and we are going to compare that also with the shot of these 15 millimeters at 4K, which of course turns into something like 24 or so millimeters. Now with that said and this long intro out of the way, let's jump into these comparisons. Now I took the camera with the 15 to 35 on and off the tripod because of course this gives me more flexibility to just simply show what I am filming. And now if I start the filming process here, now you see the 1080p image that is produced by the 15 to 35 millimeter lens. And here you have the 35 filming me just off to the side. Now this is 35 millimeters and if you hold it out like this at 35 millimeters it can be become quite heavy to be honest. Now this would be a different story if you choose to use the 35 millimeter f1.8 lens because of course it's a prime lens and it does not suffer that problem of heavy weight which the 15 to 35 does. However this lens here of course hands out the purpose or the use case that you actually can zoom all the way out and now I am here at 15 millimeters. I can go much closer to the lens and basically speak more directly into it. I also have way more surrounding around it. Now what you also notice is that there are these vignettes here in the corners and that is 
because I am also using an ND filter here. This is a BW filter and I am using this because it is quite bright and sunny out here. This of course goes away if you slightly zoom in and now looking at this now I'm about 20 21 millimeters and of course that is full frame 1080p filming just like this. Now switching into 4K. Now with the camera set up in 4K the field of view changes drastically. This now is the 15 millimeter all the way zoomed out to the widest possible on the Canon EOS RF lens lineup as of right now. I think there's nothing wider but you can see it is significantly closer. Now if I go all the way to the 35 millimeters now we are talking about a 61 millimeter lens and this is no longer a blogging format. This is really ridiculous. I have to really extend my arm out to even just get my face completely into the shot. And if I hold it at somewhat of a range that is also doable with my strength at least, you're getting just barely parts of my face. And that of course is not the point. However, going out to, for example, what I have now, this is zoomed out all the way to the 15 millimeter mark. This turns into something like 26 millimeters with the 1.8 factor. This is actually something that is somewhat doable. And if you go for the newest lens that they have in their lineup with the RF lenses, there's a 16 millimeter fixed prime lens. And that might be a really interesting contender for this. If you are on the EOS R, you want to use 4K and you can't upgrade to a full frame 4K setup. Now, however, this still gets really heavy. So switching arms is really a necessity, at least for me here when I'm doing this. And this is not even talking about this other setup here, which I also have with the battery grip. And that is quite something. But what I wanted to show here with this test is essentially showcasing that yes, in theory, you can vlog on the Canon EOS R in 4K if you have the 15 to 35. And now if you want to vlog at something like 26 millimeters. However, I personally invested into the 15 to 35 so I can go much wider, show way more of the surrounding environment, even if my preferred zoom is about 20 millimeters, someone like that. And this is the field of view that you would get with that without the vignetting going on with the ND filter. However, this is of course on full frame and I am just barely reaching for those full frame cameras that can shoot 4K eventually. But for now, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to vlog when I do use the camera like this in 1080p. I am not going to use the 4K in this kind of scenario, but I'm more and more considering at least touching into it for certain use cases, for certain types of videos like we are doing now with this high quality online course production that we are doing here. And I've been using the 35 millimeter fixed lens and the 15 to 35 a lot in those scenarios. However, there's one more lens and that's the 24 to 105. And with that, we are on full frame, 24 millimeters on the 24 to 105 F4 it's all throughout. And of course, this is somewhat the same thing if you are going for the less expensive version, which is not the fixed aperture. This here is the 4.0 version and it is lighter than the 15 to 35. It is also significantly smaller, does not have a 82 millimeter filter thread, but this also is at 24 millimeters. And as I've mentioned, even in full frame and 1080p on this camera, I prefer using the 20 millimeters, which is even four millimeters less. Now this lens gives you the flexibility because you have way more reach when you go all the way to 105 and that's kind of crazy. But of course, if you're vlogging, at least in that use case, you want to use the wide angle. And for that on 24, you already have to kind of extend your arm out to get a little more into the shot. Now, if you switch this camera to 4K, it's a different story. And now this is the 24 millimeters at 4K with a 1.8 times crop on the Canon EOS R. This of course gives you about 46 millimeters. So this again is something where you really have to extend your art. Not quite as much as with the 35 millimeters where you would have to go or it would go up to 61 millimeters. This here is just 42 millimeters, but still you really have to reach your arm out 
And even though this is a nice lens, it is a kit lens, it's about a thousand bucks, of course, way less expensive than going for the 15 to 35. But I don't think that this is really a good option. If you want to vlog in 4K, there are better options out there. And if you are going that route with these types of cameras, probably it would be better to even just look into the straight up 4K ready full frame cameras instead of going for the Canon EOS R because this is more of a step in between. And that is partially why I am stuck here. I got this camera when they started with the R lineup and that was a really great move because that gave me the flip out screen, which at the time no other camera in this kind of area did. And it also entered me into the world of the RF lenses, which are beautiful lenses and great to work with. However, I think that there are going to be a lot of people that are stuck with the Canon EOS R for quite some time with the 1.8x crop on 4K productions. But as you are stepping up and maybe you replace one camera, you get a new camera like the R6 or something like that, and then you have the 4K capabilities there, and then you have the Canon EOS R as a B cam. Now, the B cam, maybe it doesn't matter as much having that kind of a crop situation, but that, of course, is something that you have to determine for yourself. Now, personally, I'm not going to vlog on 24 millimeters in 4K. I might vlog at 15 millimeters in 4K with the crop of 1.8 times, and I'm going to definitely use 1080p in those circumstances and continue doing so. And with all that, I hope this video was interesting or helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. That's always greatly appreciated. And with that, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, and I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.